What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for June 19th, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Happy Juneteenth. Today is the day that the Union soldiers got down to Texas to let the slaves know that Abraham Lincoln had passed the Emancipation Proclamation, essentially freeing them of being slaves. And although it would be another six months before the 13th Amendment officially ended slavery and took care of the slaves in the border states, today is still a major, major milestone and a big day in U.S. history. So if you're off of work and going to be doing some celebrating, at least do something productive and, and useful at some point during the day. But happy Juneteenth. Uh, we'll start off today with a sad note. And this is not necessarily Philly sports related. Uh, but Willie Mays passed away yesterday. And probably one of the top five baseball players of all time. So it's definitely something that is worth mentioning. And I talked on Father's Day about uh, my dad. And we used to do like our fantasy drafts of all-time players. And in baseball, Willie Mays was always my top pick. And I could certainly go on and give you all the stats and everything and make the argument to me that he's the greatest player of all time, most all-around player. He hit for power, hit for average. He had speed, great defensively. Uh, but you can look all that stuff up. But a sad day for Major League Baseball. Willie Mays, one of the all-time greats and to me, the greatest to ever play, uh, pass away. So rest in peace to Willie and condolences to his family. All right, let's start now with a recap of yesterday's question of the day. I asked you about your sports superstitions. Most of you are a lot like me where you wear the same lucky shirt slash outfit. 85% of you agreed with that. Had a lot of folks, and I, I get the sense that this was more Eagles related, but a lot of people talked about eating the same thing on game days, whether it's pizza, wings. Uh, I had some people talk about brisket. So everybody has their thing. Does it work? No. Are we going to temp, temp chance and not continue to do our superstitions? Absolutely not. But thank you, as always, for participating in the question of the day. There will be one later in the show. A couple quick housekeeping updates. Friday, we're two days away from the Selection Friday show for the Ulti Philly Sports Ultimate Nickname Tournament. I will release the brackets, break them down a little bit, and then allow you the weekend to rip me about my picks until the tournament kicks off on Monday, June 24th. I am looking forward to that. Best way to stay in the loop, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Jimbo underscore Mott. Even if you're listening on the podcast version, hit me up on social media. Jimbo underscore Mott, Twitter and TikTok, at Philly Jimbo on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, and you can send me a text message if you have my personal number, whatever, but trying to grow some of the audience participation for this summer. So let's get your Philly sports related takes off of your chest. Um, also, this weekend, Friday's show might be a little shorter. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do, depending on. The specific time I have to leave, I'm not trying to get up super, super early uh, to get out to the golf tournament, but it may be a little bit shorter. Uh, however, it will be there, and then you'll also wake, be able to wake up Friday morning to the, the selection show, and then this weekend I will be away, so you'll be able, you'll, we'll see me in a different spot. Uh, not sure of the timing, but it still should be relatively early in the morning I put it up. Um, usually we don't start off until nine so that's later than what i would start work so you should be all right but just a couple heads up for this weekend all right so i guess we'll start with the phillies game and what a game it was it was one of those games where the whole time it just looked like a loss they were not doing well with getting runners uh knocked in at one point i think it was like 11 or 13 runners were left on base uh <clears throat> excuse me Nola wasn't bad, just had that rough inning, uh, and it was still only 3-1, to one, but it just had that feel like it was going to be a loss and then we were going to try to have to win the, the series today. But then all of a sudden the offense woke up, and it's June, so Schwarber's hitting Schwarbombs. He crushed that one yesterday uh, to bring them within one, 
And then I think the most underrated part of that ninth inning yesterday was Bryce Harper leading off with just a solid single. And he's not going to get credit for anything but scoring the tie and run. But he's the catalyst that sort of started that. And I think that we've seen this all the time. As Bryce goes, the Phillies go. And yeah, it's going to be Castellanos who, who knocked in the big hit and everything will be the hero. But for me, that really, and I, I got like, I jotted this down because I wanted to make sure last night. That started with Bryce. And I think those are like the little things. And making as much money as he should, those are the things he should be doing. But he does them. And then if you, if I watch the, the celebration at the end too, he sort of just was like, okay, and let Cassianos, which again is a sign of a good leader. Uh, but I wanted to point that out and, and move it in because I, I saw it and I think that is literally what sparked that whole ninth inning rally. But a solid win, looked like a loss. And with this team, again, you can never count them out at this point. It doesn't matter the score. It doesn't matter how many outs they have, how many strikes. They're always live to win a game. So good win for them. They're a little business person special this afternoon. If you're going down, good luck. Be safe. Drink plenty of water along with your beer. But it's going to be a hot one down there. But they look to sweep the Padres, who ever since those dudes started dancing before the NLCS, the Padres have not done anything against the Phillies. And I think it's hilarious because that's what's in. Uh, Some news on Rojas. Rob Thompson said there's some things he could work on to get called back up. Uh, Bunning, sacrificing, moving runners over, things like that. Personally, barring an injury, I think he might be done. Because I I think at this point, the writing's on the wall that they're going to try to go after an outfielder at the trade deadline. Who that outfielder is, I don't know. But I I think it's it's right there. That's ultimately what they're going to do. They have some guys that might be worth trading. Depends on how high level of an outfielder they want to get. But unfortunately, at least for this season, I think Rojas is done, barring an injury. And, I mean, it was an experiment. And I think if you look back at some of the the teams that have done well for the Phillies, they have not been afraid to, to move on from players. In 1980, they switched managers. And then uh, in 2008, it was Adam Eaton, just a big money free agent, and he wasn't doing it. So they went out and got Joe Blanton. Uh, This might not be any different. And if that's what they need, I'm all for it. Even back in 93, it was Juan Bell and the rotation of guys they had at shortstop didn't hesitate to bring in Stocker. So I I like the the move here. And you got to, when you are this good and have the opportunity, you kind of got to look at it. You don't want to necessarily completely blow up the future, but if you can make a move, and even if it hurts his confidence a little bit, if you got to make this move, you got to do it. Uh, so I really look for the the trade talks for an outfielder to really start heating up within the next three weeks. I don't think Dombrowski is going to show his cards too early. However, I do think an outfielder and likely a reliever are coming. Um, But stay tuned for that as it goes. But good win overall for the Phils last night. And then this Friday, which is pretty cool. Usually when they do things like this, it it tends to get blacked out here locally. But the game, I believe, is on Apple TV. And it is Cole Hamill's retirement night. But Comcast, or NBC Sports, I guess. I'll still call it Comcast Sports and that, even though it hasn't been that for years. But NBC Sports Philly will show the Cole Hamill's retirement ceremony in its entirety. So looking forward to that. Uh, Good career by Cole and one of my favorites as well. All right. You know who also is a favorite of mine? PhillyGoat.com. They have the, the awesome less than an athlete shirt making fun of the LeBron James more than an athlete shirt. And I think all of us here in Philly would consider ourselves less than an athlete if you really stop and think about it. Uh, but get that shirt. They have all the other great shirts. And then the shoes. I keep talking about the shoes, but go get the shoes. I'm telling you, the Schmitties are the most versatile shoes I've ever owned in my life. So go check out phillygoat.com. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. That's phillygoat.com. 
promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. And speaking of shoes, I wasn't able to get them. And I don't know if anybody else had this. You can let me know on the Back to the Future voice and text line. I tried to get into the the drop for it's the first time I've ever done a, a sneaker drop on the Nike sneakers app. I tried to get those Philly uh, low top dunks and didn't do it. So if anybody out there had luck, let me know. And if anybody has a pair of size 12 that they would not be opposed to selling, not necessarily uh, for the 500 to a thousand dollars I saw on the secondary market yesterday, hit me up. And if you're going to try to do 500 to a thousand, I'm sorry. I am never spending 500 to a thousand dollars on a pair of shoes. But if you do have a pair that you're looking to sell, let me know. All right, some Eagles news. And the big story yesterday wasn't actually an Eagles story per se. It was Hassan Reddick holding out of Jets minicamp. And basically the Jets are saying that he lied to them, that they were expecting him to be in camp. Uh, they had talked about a contract extension that the Jets were not opposed to it that they wanted to see how this season played out, and then they would gladly uh, have those discussions. Reddick held out, has held, held out, and apparently is looking for a new contract. Now, this impacts the Eagles because they the trade involved a conditional pick where he has to play 67 and a half, I think, percent of the snaps in order for that to vest into a second round pick. Uh, currently, it is a third round pick. So it's definitely a situation worth monitoring and uh, not to besmirch a a local Philly guy who went to Temple. And you guys know how I feel about my owls. But now I'm starting to wonder if Howie and the front office knew more than what they led on. And this is part of the reason why they moved on from Reddick. And I also wonder... If Reddick is one of the guys who had some issues with the way things went down. And again, purely speculation, not trying to besmirch the guy. However, it might have to chalk one up here to Howie because he didn't want to pay him the money that he was asking for. And instead of letting it become a distraction, made a move and was able to to trade and get, and get some, some pieces for it. But all of a sudden now, Reddick is unhappy. So again, we'll monitor that because it does impact the Eagles draft. Uh, but again, and don't take this as Hassan Reddick hate because I loved him from Temple and everything. But sometimes it's better to move on. Just like the Phillies, go for it. I think Howie may have saw something. So kudos to Harry. Harry. Howie on possibly making the right move here now and everybody ripped him for the trade but now it's looking like maybe howie nobody's gonna give him credit for it they'll they'll just say oh yeah yeah yeah, howie he traded his son radic but maybe it was the right decision and then finally aj and Devonte. uh i saw an article i think it was on bleeding green nation where they talked about how much of a fan they have been so far of kellen moore's offense very wide open and lots of freedom for the wide receivers, which again, I'd like, I, I think it, it, as long as Jalen comes in with his head on right um, and doesn't let this whole thing with Sirianni become a distraction, which I still don't think it is, but now it's, it's, it's turning into something that needs to be addressed by him. Uh, I, I think by training camp, a lot of people kind of, it'll be forgotten about, But then once training camp comes, uh, he needs to say something in his very first appearance with the media. Uh, So stay tuned for that. But AJ, Devontae, big fans of Kellen Moore's offense. So if they're big fans, I'm a big fan. Flyers news. They are looking to trade Cam Atkinson to try to free up some cap space and, and really help the team transition from the old to the new. Uh, They did have a deal, I guess, with San Jose in place, but Cam Atkinson has a a modified no-trade clause, and San Jose was one of the teams on his no-trade clause. Uh, But it's worth monitoring to see if he's going to to be able to possibly waive that or if they could end up working out a trade with someone else. And there is always the possibility, too, that he will have to play or will not have to, but will be back with the Flyers because nothing can be worked out. 
and is there animosity between the players like it's it's a dicey situation but they got to be professional about it because there's a reason why people put in if especially if he has a modified no trade clause there's a reason why he didn't want to go to san jose likely because they're a worse team than the flyers but uh we'll continue to monitor that as we go uh, the art, the, this article also talked about all of the dead cap space that they're still dealing with from all of the, the bad contracts from the previous regime, um, and all the years worth of shit contracts that they gave out. Uh, so it, it's definitely don't expect, even if Mishkov does come over this year, I wouldn't necessarily expect a quick, all of a sudden they're in the Stanley cup finals. Um, although with hockey, you never know hockey more so than any other sport teams can get hot. But with the Flyers right now, this is a marathon, not a sprint. So don't expect great success overnight. Uh, but they certainly should be in the mix for a playoff spot next year. Uh, Mishkov coming over, though, that does solve a lot of the issues the Flyers had. Makes that dead cap money a little bit easier to deal with. There's still no update on Mishkov and... I, get, I feel like the, the sad Pablo meme was sitting here every day when I talk to you guys about Mishkov, just waiting for any type of news, just sitting there on the bench like. So uh, stay tuned. We will, as soon as we have something, uh, I'll let you know. But the whole Flyers thing is a marathon, not a sprint. And the, Danny Briere and Keith Jones, every chance they get, they continue to remind everybody that relax it's not going to be an overnight fix and just is really annoying because of how bad that the previous regime messed up the flyers uh but the piece i like the guys they have in place so uh the the stanley cup is extended a little bit longer so kind of <clears throat> takes away the focus from free agency in the draft um that i have a feeling this series now is going to go seven i think edmonton's going to win uh, and then force game seven, but we'll see. Union in action in Cincinnati tonight, looking to to bounce back from that horrible loss to Miami the other night, and hopefully they they can get something moving here. It, they're a team on a, a sharp decline from a couple years ago when they were playing for the MLS Cup. All right, Sixers news. Lots of rumors with the Sixers. Uh, apparently, they're not per, uh, pursuing Mikel Bridges, whom they drafted whose mom used to work for the Sixers. Um, I, I don't know. I think <clears throat> he might not be a bad fit, uh, but we'll see what they do. They did work out a few players yesterday, including Sam Decker, who has been playing over in the British Basketball League, the same league that Nick Nurse coached in. Decker was a former pick of the Rockets and played under picked by Daryl Morey, so I don't know if that's part of why they brought him in. Uh, he's played well to his credit over in the British Basketball League. I, it's hard to judge this one in a vacuum without knowing what the other moves the Sixers are. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, if they can get him for, for the right price, I'm not necessarily opposed to it. And lots of talk yesterday about the Celtics winning the NBA championship and just how far or close the Sixers are. And I think it's easy to forget that they had the Celtics on the ropes two years ago. And yes, they couldn't get it done. They had game six at home and they blew it. And then Joe had 15 points in game seven. But I think that team more than any <clears throat> showed that you need to get the right players around Joe because Joe had an off game. But it wasn't like James Harden did much. Um, so I don't know how much of a compliment James Harden and Joe are, which really hammers home to me the point that maybe we ought to to take Joe's opinion about Paul George if he feels it's somebody he can play with. Um, but there's also lots of talk about the process because Drew Holiday was the first piece to sort of go in the process. And I have to give a shout out to Spike Eskin on this because I agree 100% with his take that everybody just includes everything the Sixers have done since that Drew Holiday trade is the process. 
And it's not. The process ended when Sam Hinkie was fired, when the Sixers ownership caved to the pressure of the NBA and brought in Brian Colangelo, who completely, I think, screwed up the team. He's the one that ended up making the trade with Boston uh, that ended up us taking Marco Fultz, even though the signs, again, were there with Fultz that he was broken. Uh, so I, I think... He, Spike's take was you need to compartmentalize it all. And and I agree. And I, I don't know. I look at it like this, and that's going to lead us to the question of the day too. Where they were versus where they are now, I, I think it's – yes, it did not lead to a championship. It didn't lead to anything more than a second-round playoff. But the Sixers are an exciting team, which they weren't pre-process. The Sixers legitimately are in the title conversation every year – which they weren't pre-process. So it was not the resounding success that everybody thought it was going to be. However, I, I'm fine with calling it a success because you have free agents that want to come here. They are one of the top teams. They are must-see TV. There were times where nobody was going to Sixers games. Now it's sold out every night. So if you take a step back, I think the process is what got us here and it allowed us to get Joe who is arguably the best player in the league when he's healthy. So I I don't know. But the question of the day then is, are the Sixers better now, like in a better position? I I know they're a better team. But are they in a better position now than they were in 2013? 267-495-8531 gets you in on the Back to the Future voice and text line. I think all boxes say, yes, they are. Uh, as far as free agents wanting to come here, as far as attendance, as far as having a, a legitimate bona fide superstar, all of that. And depending on what they're able to do this offseason, I don't necessarily have the faith in this regime to do it. But the potential is there for them to build a team that can compete with the Celtics, who the Sixers just two years ago had on the ropes. And because of the way the team was constructed, weren't able to finish the deal. So, I, I yes, the Celtics are good. I'm not taking anything away from them. This is not Boston hate coming in. But they're not – I mean, they're beatable. They're beatable. Every, like Joe said in the interview the other night, everybody in the East was hurt last year. So let's see how – when things get run back this year, let's see how it is. But the question of the day, are the Sixers in a better position today – to contend for a title than they were in 2013 when the process officially began. 267-495-8531. Get you in on the Back to the Future voice and text line and hit me up on all the social media as well. But are the Sixers in a better position today than they were in 2013 when they traded Drew Holiday officially kicking off the process? From one Sixers story to another, today we're going to go back to 1984 And on this day in 1984, it was the 1984 NBA draft, arguably and widely considered to be the best draft in NBA history. The Sixers had the fifth overall pick, and they took one Charles Barkley, a forward out of Auburn. You might have heard of him. He is a Philly legend. However, and this story I've heard a few different times. The last time he told it was on the New Heights podcast with Jason and Travis. But Barkley, when he was drafted and pre-draft, went at no parts of Philly. And once they uh, knew or kind of figured that they were going to take him, uh, his agent said at the time, because of the way contracts were, they could only offer him $75,000. Barkley, in true Barkley faction, said, shit, I didn't leave college for $75,000. He weighed 283. The Sixers had asked him to get down around there uh, because he was hovering around 300 in college. So Barkley got pissed and went to Denny's three days in a row, ate a few Grand Slam breakfasts, and basically put on 15 to 20 pounds uh, in three days to get his weight closer back to 300 pounds. Obviously, Sam Katz was pissed. Barkley was pissed. Uh, They asked him... uh, to, to drop the weight, but then they were able to to maneuver some contracts, and then they did offer him $2 million, and then credit to Moses Malone, who then got screwed by Sam Katz a couple years later for volunteering to work with Barkley to get him down, um, get his weight down, and kind of show him the ropes and uh, teach the games, or teach him the game. 
And then to the Sixers' credit, I don't know if this was Katz or somebody, they did run a promo uh, Barkley's rookie year that anyone over 260 gets in for free. So basically, if you weigh more than Charles Barkley, you got in for free. Uh, but it all worked out in the end. Uh, Barkley played eight years here, averaged tw- a little over 23 points a game, almost 12 rebounds. His number 34 is retired in the rafters. It did not end well. And, but that was more of a testament to, to Harold Katz and the, the Sixers' ownership group more so than Barkley. Uh, but back to that 84 draft, uh, three of the top five picks are three of the greatest players to ever play the game. Michael Jordan, Hakeem Olajuwon, and Charles Barkley. So that, I would say, is a pretty damn good draft. And by the way, Barkley has one of the best nicknames in Philly sports history in the round mound of rebound. But where will he land on our brackets? Find out on Friday. But on this day in 1984, the Sixers took Charles Barkley with the number five overall pick after a little bit of a contentious uh, back and forth between Harold Katz and Charles Barkley. And I think I said Sam Katz earlier, and I do that all the time. Sam Katz is the guy that ran for mayor. Harold Katz was the guy that was the owner of the Sixers. Uh, But either way, it worked out. Eight great seasons in Philly for Charles. And it all started this day in 1984. Finally today, we'll take a trip down Philly's memory lane. And today's spotlight is Grady Sizemore, outfielder. He was a third-round pick of the Expos in 2000. Signed with the Phillies in June of 2014 after he was released by the Red Sox. Only played 99 games in Philly. He hit 250, three homers, 18 RBI, and 260 at bats. Uh, and was released a year after they signed him, June uh, of 2015. He started off his career in Philly in um, the Lehigh Valley. Uh, he ended up getting his 1,000th hit with the Phillies. Uh, he did sign a contract extension in 2014 after he his hot start with the Phillies. Ruben Amaro Jr. said, hey, if you can continue to hit like this, we'll, we'll sign you to a contract extension. Ultimately, it didn't work out. He was more near the end of his career. Uh, but for to his credit, when he was in Cleveland, he was a three-time All-Star, won two gold gloves, won a silver slugger. And unfortunately for the Phillies, this is another situation of them having the right guy at the wrong time. But Grady Sizemore, outfielder, is today's Phillies memory lane spotlight. On this day in 2000, or 1984, not 2084, 1984, the Sixers took Charles Barkley with the number five overall pick in the NBA draft. And we know, as they say, the rest is history. He, did, he talks openly about trying to sabotage it by putting on all, all that weight by eating Denny's Grand Slams, uh, which I think is honestly the most... Charles Barkley thing ever, uh, but that's why we love Chuck. Uh, let me know. It's question of the day: Are the Sixers better in a better position today to to contend for a championship than they were in 2013 when the the process began? And to me, that's what you got to judge it on. And I know we we haven't won or gotten there, but they're in a much better position. They did what they had to do, and if it wasn't for the ownership group being weak and not standing up to Adam Silver. Who knows what Sam Hinkie had up his sleeves. But instead, we got Brian Colangelo uh, screwing it all up, and now here we are with Daryl Morey, who thinks this is Houston 15 years ago. But we'll see. But let me know your thoughts. Are the Sixers in a better position today than they were in 2013? We will continue to monitor the Mishkov situation the Hassan Reddick situation, and all things Philly sports, and we'll be back at it tomorrow. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History for June 19th, 2024. I'm Jim Montgomery. Be safe out there. Happy Juneteenth. Go have yourself a Wednesday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.